In this video, we're going to look at the idea of free energy as the maximum work. So embedded in the name of free energy, uh, you might be wondering why is it called free energy? So we refer to free energy as free energy because it's the energy that is available to do work. All right, so free energy is the energy that is available to do work. Right, so in, so typically with other thermodynamic potentials, things like enthalpy, internal energy, you have energy that's, you have a certain amount of energy that's lost to vibrations of molecules or some other degree of freedom that molecules have available to them. The free energy um, is the energy that's available to actually do work. So um, these idea of, so this idea of the Hemholtz and Gibbs free energy really gives us insight into, um, you know, how much of the energy is available to actually do work on some sort of process. So um, yeah, you've probably heard this definition before, but let's look at from the, uh, from the equations how this idea of free energy being the uh, energy available to do work, where this actually comes from. So we'll start with the Hemholtz free energy. And let's start with the uh, definition of the Hemholtz, right? So the Hemholtz free energy is equal to U minus TS, right? It's just our general definition for the thermodynamic potential. And if we do, um, if we do have a differential for dA, right? So we have dA is equal to du minus dTS, right? And then again, we have to do the product rule here. So we got du minus TDS minus SDT. Now keep in mind that for the Hemholtz free energy, um, its criteria for spontaneity is determined at constant temperature and volume, right? So I should put here that we're at constant temperature and constant volume, right? So uh, with the Hemholtz free energy, this term, this SDT term is going to be zero since we have no change in temperature. Right, so that guy's gonna go away. So now we're just left with dA being equal to du minus T dS. So what we can do here is we can substitute the definition for the entropy in and see what we get. So we have dA is equal to du minus T. The entropy is dQ over T, right? And since we have temperature on the outside here and in the denominator, those two cancel out. So we're just left with dA is equal to du minus dQ. And from the first law of thermodynamics, this is the definition of the work, right? du minus dQ is just the work. So we have that dA is equal to dW. Right, so this is equal to your maximum work, right? So we say that the, the Hemholtz free energy is the maximum work. Right, so since we, you know, when we derive this at constant temperature and volume, we basically get down to Hemholtz being equal to the work. The Hemholtz free energy is your maximum amount of work that a system can do. Now let's look at the same sort of definition for the Gibbs energy. Right, so for Gibbs, we're going to do more or less something similar, right? So we know that the Gibbs free energy is going to be equal to U plus PV minus TS, right? And if we take the differential here, DG would be equal to DU plus DPV minus DTS. So we have to do the product rule on both of those terms, right? So we end up with PDV plus VDP. Then we do the product rule here, we get TDS minus SDT. Okay, now for this guy, for the Gibbs free energy, we derived a spontaneity criteria at constant temperature and pressure, right? So what effect is that gonna have on this differential here? That means that the pressure, this uh, term that depends on a change in pressure, that guy goes away. 
And then we have this term that depends on a change in temperature. That guy goes away as well, right? So we've got those three surviving terms there in the definition for the Gibbs free energy. We've got du plus PDV uh, minus TDS. Okay, so um, this minus TDS, right? We've looked at it in the last video, right? This, this TDS term is the same as DQ, right? So we can make that substitution. So DG is equal to DU plus PDV uh, minus DQ, right? So here again, we end up with this DU minus DQ term, right? So DU minus DQ being equal to the work. So we get DG is equal to, uh, let's see, PDV. Yeah, so just uh, DW plus PDV. Okay, so this term, right, let's, let's look at what we have here. So we can actually re-express the work, right? So more or less, this is the definition of the Gibbs free energy in terms of work. But we can be a little bit more specific here. So we know that the work is going to be equal to whatever your expansion work is, right? So the work done by some sort of expanding gas uh, plus the work done by any other process, right? So we'll just put it as uh, other, right? So you have your expansion work and then you have any other work that you have, any non-expansion work. We know that the expansion work is equal to negative PDV, Right. So we can just plug that in and then we have any other contributions to the work um, included in that sum. So what we can do is use this plug this guy in to our expression for uh, DG. So when we do that, we get DG is equal to negative PDV plus DW other plus PDV. And so what do we get here? Well, those PDV terms are both going to cancel out, right? You got negative PDV plus PDV. And then so what you have here is that the Gibbs free energy is going to be equal to all the other contributions to the work outside of expansion, right? So at constant temperature and pressure, your Gibbs free energy is giving you all other contributions to the work. So that's why we actually refer to the Gibbs free energy as the maximum non-expansion work. So we have maximum non-expansion work. Right, so this gives you a little bit more insight into what the free energy terms are, right? So the Hemholtz free energy is giving you the maximum work um, from all contributions, right? Expansion and all other contributions, right? Uh, the Gibbs free energy is giving you the maximum non-expansion work. So, you know, if there's some electrical work going on or, you know, what have you, whatever other types of work you have going on in your system outside of a gas expansion, the Gibbs free energy is the maximum non-expansion work.